I'm going to give a presentation now, which is just talking through um, some very uh, particular details in terms of approach and advocacy. Uh, and this is relevant for those working uh, themselves in terms of disability issues. It's, work, it's relevant for those working on more broader issues that support persons with disabilities or even looking at uh, preventative measures, etc. cetera. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is talk through just some, some, some key uh, elements of advocacy. And I wanted to mention that uh, two things. One is that this is based on a toolkit that I was part of developing uh, some years ago with the International Red Cross. Um, and so this is, a, this is taking elements of that toolkit and, and sharing it with you today. But the second is that uh, there may well be many of these elements that I talk about today that you are already doing in your work, and that's great. That's fantastic. The idea of this presentation is to ensure that there isn't something that you might be forgetting in terms of an approach to effective advocacy. Because we all know, particularly in advocacy, it can be very easy to get extremely into detail or passionate about one particular aspect of the advocacy journey. But how can we remember to ensure that we're doing as many other tasks as possible to give us the best possibility of success? So you'll see there quite a long list of the different elements. And I'd also like to mention before I go on is that this is also um, one of the very important strengths of partnership and collaboration. I have one particular element there which is about collaboration, but also you yourself or your organization might not be able to cover all of these different elements in any particular campaign. So it's even more important that you're able to collaborate, to network, to partner, to ensure that there are enough friends on board to help drive forward and get as many of these elements in place as part of your advocacy campaign. Okay, let me talk through these one by one, and I'm going to keep Sharif's comment in mind about implementation here, yeah? This is quite, hopefully quite practical steps that each of you can take, your organizations can take to try and help to ensure that your advocacy is effective and achieving the best possible impact. So the first one, like many of them, will sound very simple. Uh, but it's about gathering the background information to ensure that you're actually aware of the issue that you're trying to advocate for and what the opportunities for success are. What is the current status of the relevant law or regulation or framework or issue in your country or in the region that you are trying to uh, impact? What is the latest research and data saying? And who's saying it? And like I say, it seems very obvious, but we know as well two things. One, sometimes we get an idea very quickly and because we're all passionate, because we're all very proactive and we're leaders, we might just jump straight into the doing. But have we taken a moment just to think, what is the issue? What do we know about it? Who's talking about it? Who has released research about it? And what is it saying? And critically, what were some of the other advocacy efforts that have been undertaken in the past to try and impact this issue? What can we learn from what's happened before? To be completely honest, what can we steal in terms of past approaches? What can we see that worked well? What can we see that didn't work well? How can we extend upon work that has already been taken? So just taking a moment when you are approaching a particular advocacy issue to do some little bit of work to gather background information, share that amongst teams, to help inform the approach is a really critical step. And I, again, I'm sure that, that many people are doing this step, but I also know having worked with, with advocacy organizations in many, many countries, a lot of the time as well, it might be that the donor comes and says, you're gonna work on this particular idea or concept, and people just need to start running with that idea. Or as I said, there's a particular topic that people feel passionate about and immediately jump into the doing of the advocacy. But just taking that moment to think about what background information there is, what the data is telling you, 
what the evidence shows and what's been done in the past is a really critical thing to do. And it's even something you can do if you haven't already in an active advocacy campaign. Just take some time to look and see what information is there. The second, again, might seem quite uh, straightforward, but again, something that I've seen many times that people jump straight into the doing of activity without thinking just for a moment about what we are really trying to achieve in an overarching sense. What's our vision? What's our goal? And what are the objectives to get there? So you can see on the screen, a vision is a statement that describes the future of this issue in your country or your region or your place, wherever you're trying to do your advocacy. And it should ideally be something that is broad about what you want to see in the future about this issue. And I gave an example here, sorry, it's a bit unclear on the screen, but from the Ford Foundation. And the Ford Foundation has a mission for their advocacy work, which is that they want to live in a world where people with disabilities thrive as members of a powerful community and where disability is celebrated as an identity. So this is not a very specific objective or a very small target. It's quite broad, but it's, I think, something important to keep in mind to ensure that when you are making strategic decisions in your advocacy work, you can always ask the question, are we keeping in mind where we want to go? What's the end point of this journey? And yes, people are gonna come in with different ideas, different thoughts, different funding, etc. But are we always at times keeping in mind what is our vision? Where are we trying to get to with all of this? So setting a clear vision for your advocacy work is a really important step. The second step then would be, what are the goals to try and achieve that vision? So what's the long-term result that you hope to see emerge from your advocacy efforts? It might well be that there are multiple advocacy campaigns that you conduct that move towards this particular goal. And I'm gonna give an example here from the uh, road traffic injury prevention field uh, where you can see that there was a specific goal outlined which that they said that in 10 years they wanted to uh, have 5 million lives saved on the roads. Okay, so now we're getting a bit more specific in terms of what we are trying to achieve through our advocacy. The vision is much more about where we want to see things more generally. And now at the goal, we are really trying to say, okay, so what, what are we trying to get here? What's the outcome of this work? What are we trying to change? Who are we trying to impact? And are we ensuring that we are moving towards that particular goal? And then the third step down then is the objectives. So what objectives you're going to set for your campaign, your advocacy work, to try and meet those goals and that vision. And these are much more specific, evidence-based changes that you want to achieve and that will lead towards that goal and vision. And if it's linked to particular policies, it also should be specifically named those policies that you want to influence. So if there are laws or regulations in Kenya, in Uganda, Tanzania, Sudan, that you know need to be changed to try and reach that vision and that goal, then the objective is the time to go and say, let's make that an area of focus. It can be quite difficult to do an advocacy campaign about a big, broad vision of where you want to see disability situation in a country. But you can start to target and say, we know we're trying to impact these three or four issues or policies or regulations through our objectives. We know that we are somehow moving towards that broader goal and vision. And also remember that, 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 that objectives can also follow the, the SMART approach, which I'm sure you have all heard of before, by trying to ensure that they are specific, that they are measurable, that they are attainable. And this is very important. Is it realistic? Can we actually achieve this? And the, the background information that you gather should tell you that. Is this actually something that can happen? Are they relevant and also giving a time bound to them? And that's important also for you and your organization to ensure 
that you're actually developing something that is realistic and that can be done in a particular period of time. So those objectives, as I mentioned, should really be the pathway leading up to the goals that you have set for your advocacy work. Almost like stepping stones that get you there. What's the goal of this, the objective of this particular campaign and this particular campaign? And are we ensuring that it leads up to our goal and our broader vision? And uh, in a little while, we'll go through a, a bit of an activity that is talking about um, that is looking at the development of, of objectives to inform your advocacy campaigns. I also want to mention again, this is not to say that many of you at organizations don't already have goals or objectives that are there, right? Uh, of course you do. But please also just remember, when you leave this event and you go back to your daily work, and you recognize that all of us are very busy, we have lots of activity, we respond to lots of emails, we have lots of phone calls, we are always busy, busy, busy. But just taking a moment to remember, is, is what we are doing adding towards the objectives that we have set? Is that driving us towards the goal and the vision that we believe is important in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda, and elsewhere? So, Keeping these in mind and using them to help guide your work and prioritize is really important. Okay, so the next element I wanted to talk about, and I talked about it briefly before as well, is the importance of building strong partnerships. This could be informal groups or formal coalitions that come together for a period of time to collaborate to achieve change through advocacy. And one of the uh, key opportunities that I've seen work very well is this idea of a self-assessment of yourself or your organization. And what do I mean by a self-assessment? This is about you or your organization sitting down and saying, what strengths do we have to try and do this advocacy work? And what are we missing? None of us are perfect. None of our organizations have everything. So what are the things that we can add to that through partnership to try and achieve our goals and our objectives? And then how, together with them, can we impact stakeholders? And you can see this very simple, uh, this very simple uh, image here, which has your organization sitting within your core partners and then talking to and engaging with the broader stakeholders that are relevant to your issue. And I can't stress enough just how important and impactful building strong partnerships is in advocacy work. I want to give a quick example of some previous work I, I supported in the Philippines, in Asia, where we had one or two very, very passionate NGOs who were doing amazing work, and they were trying to get a law passed um, which was about protecting children um, and ensuring that there was safe and accessible transport access for children along roads. And we had two amazing NGOs who were very active, who were very um, passionate, and, but that had their skills mostly in looking at policies and developing policies that they could share with the government to try and encourage them to adopt. And also they had very good connection to policymakers and leaders. So they had some good connections and networks, but they did not have any, any real experience in engaging the media and, and partnering with the media. They had no real experience in developing media content that would be attractive. And they had no real experience in how to engage the public to try and support the advocacy efforts. So what they did is they went and they did an assessment of what strengths and weaknesses they had and then they actually went out and gathered other partners into a coalition to form a united coalition to strive for this issue. And within about 18 months of this, with a lot of effort and a lot of activity, they saw their law passed. And the first time that there was a, a law in place in the Philippines that enshrined the rights of young people to have safe and accessible access across all roads in the Philippines. So it's just one small example of the ability of an organization to say, we don't fear the fact that we might not have all the skills ourselves. In fact, 
let us acknowledge it and let's go and find others who would like to partner with us to try and drive it forward. Partnership does bring some complications, of course. It is difficult to work in partnership. It means that you have to always coordinate, collaborate, talk, have meetings, have phone calls, share documents, but the power of it to really strive forward and, and reach your goals and objectives is, is absolutely there. So I really encourage this step and ensure that you're, you're taking a, an approach about co strong collaboration and partners. Okay, so the next element that we included in this toolkit was to just ensure that you know who the targets of your advocacy are. Have you really taken a moment to say, it's not enough that we just talk about the issue, we need to think about who are the people or the organisations that we are trying to aim and target at who can help us to change? Who are we trying to convince? Who is it that needs to change their mind to ensure that my issue and my objective gets reached? And then shape your activities, your outputs, your media engagement to truly, really try and target those people. And I would encourage all advocates and activists to have time to sit down on any particular issue and use some kind of template, and I've given one example here, which just simply lists down who are the key stakeholders we are trying to impact. What information do we know about them? Who do we know that knows them? How can we influence them? And just having this information at hand across an organization is so useful because again, when you're thinking about prioritization of resources and activities, you can really sit down and say, is this idea that someone comes up with actually going to help us because of what we know about our advocacy target? Is it really going to be impactful for them? We all might think it's a good idea, right? but I'm not the person that needs to be convinced. I need to convince George. So what do I know about George? And why would he care about my issue? And it actually might be that my idea of what's important is completely different to George. So if you take this same example and think of government, or you think of any other major stakeholder that you're trying to target, and try and get as much information as possible document it and share it amongst your organization. Really important, again, to prioritize, but also important in case I leave the organization tomorrow or my colleague does, at least that is documented there in your organization so that others can pick it up and hopefully have a, a more targeted approach. Okay, so the next element that I wanted to, to mention in terms of things to consider when you're doing advocacy campaigns is really as an organization or as a partnership deciding, what is it that we are not happy to change? What is our non-negotiable? In advocacy at all times, we always have to agree to something that is not exactly what we wanted at the start, isn't it? It's never perfect. We always have to give a little here and a little there. But it's really important for everyone to, to, to fully agree to say, what are we not happy to, to give away? What is our non-negotiable? We might be happy to say, yes, okay, we wanted one, two, three, four, five. Our advocacy targets have agreed to three of them, right? So which are the three that are absolute musts? We're not going to give up ground there. We're not going to change. Decide what those are and ensure that if there is compromise, no, not if, when there is compromise, you're not giving away those because otherwise you're going to start to go away from what you know is going to work in terms of your goal and objective. All right, the next element that I wanted to mention is, is about identifying sponsors and champions. So these are the people that aren't necessarily in your organization or in your partner organizations but might be uh, public figures, influential figures, respected people who might come and support the work that you are doing. 
And I'm giving two examples there of, 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 of examples I've seen. One from work in Finland where a particular organization, you know, brought in an ambassador for disability inclusion. And another from my home country, Australia, and this is a gentleman by the name of Kurt Fernley, who was a Paralympic athlete and uh, won gold medals at the Paralympic Games. And uh, he was, a, he continues to be an influential champion and sponsor for disability issues in Australia and did so much advocacy work, he was actually announced as the Australian of the Year because of his work supporting this. His background was not advocacy, he's a sports person, but he partnered with some great advocacy groups to have him use his high profile to support the issue in the media, amongst politicians and others. So always think, who can we, who can we get to come and support us? Who's going to be able to come and help us and give some more profile to our particular campaign? Okay, so the next element I wanted to mention is about developing strategies. So this is more about like what you are going to do in your particular campaign. What you're going to do to realize those objectives and trying to make them as targeted and context in terms of the local issues as, po as possible. So strategies might include things like ensuring that you have, you know, in-person meetings, briefings, workshops, providing testimonies, attending other people's events and bringing your issue across to other issues, whatever might, those might be. And I mention this here again because another thing to say is that, as I mentioned earlier, we all can get very focused on each and every activity that we're doing day to day without sometimes thinking about what it is that we're trying to do across all of these activities. And are we ensuring that we are not forgetting about doing something else that we could do to support our advocacy? So it might be that you have a big focus on media and you're wanting to use the media, but are you remembering that there are other aspects of advocacy that are also important that aren't to do with the media, that are more about meeting with people, are more about building connections and networks? Maybe it's about developing some research that's gonna support your advocacy, whatever that might be. Just remember that that development of strategies is important to ensure that you're not just getting stuck on one area, you're remembering to diversify. And if your organization or you yourself cannot do this all yourself, again, think about those partnerships and collaboration. And I'm giving a quick example here, sorry, it's very small, but just to give you an example of an advocacy campaign that I supported somewhere, and uh, what you can see here is that the strategy level, I'll give you an example, strategy 1.1 here, was to increase engagement with key stakeholders, political and others, to get different states to comment on a particular law that was in development, okay? And then under this, you can see a huge range of activities that are trying to meet this strategy, yeah? So this is quite specific, right? This is a strategy that's saying, let's get these particular stakeholders to try and influence states to actually talk about a particular law. And then you can list a number of different activities that are there within that particular strategy to try and ensure that that would happen. And this might include media. It might include meetings. It might include letters that are written to those representatives to try and get their, um, to try and get their support. You can see a different strategy here is to demonstrate public and political support. So this is about using media and other ways to showcase the fact that the public is supporting your issue. So can you get testimonials from people who want to support your issue? Can you do surveys or polls to, to show that support and then use the media to get that out and get the message out there that it's not just you who's supporting this particular advocacy, this is actually something that's, uh, uh, that's also um, publicly supported. All right, the next uh, of the elements is to prepare to communicate effectively. So if you are going to use the media or try and engage with the media, the first thing again is to define who your audience is. So don't just do media 
because it's good to do media. Think about who are we trying to target through the media? Who would we like to see this? Think about which channels are the best to use. Think about what messages and what tactics you're going to use in the media, but also who's going to speak. So I talked before about the champions, but it could also be your organization. It could be the members that you're of your organization or the, the youth that you represent. It could be partner organizations. And then also capitalize on existing opportunities. So if there is a particular international day that is more likely to get recognition for your issue, capitalize. If there's a particular event or, or relevant uh, report that is being released, capitalize on this rather than trying to get it all yourself and all the momentum yourself. But choosing the, 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 the messengers is, is such an important one because it is also not ideal in advocacy if the media and the public and your advocacy stakeholders are always hearing from one voice, right? It's not great that it's always one person speaking over and over again. For the media, this becomes honestly a bit boring. It's like, why, is it, why are we hearing this person one more time? So how can I ensure that across time, we've got different people coming out saying the same thing? Yeah, the same message is there but I've got someone else speaking. So an example of, of, a, of a campaign I supported some years ago in Kenya, where, where there was some organizations who did this, and what, that, what they actually did was they formed very strong relationships with a number of members of parliament who they knew would have some connection to their issue, yeah? So the issue was about child safety, and they knew that there were some members of parliament that maybe had some previous issues that impacted their personal lives around child safety. So they made these relationships and eventually built those relationships so that these, young, these members of parliament would come to media events and talk on behalf of the issue. And so this is a way of ensuring that you've got different people speaking uh, and, and, and hopefully a different way to, to bring that message out through the media. So again, this one might seem very obvious, but another key element is just to ensure that you actually have an action plan in place for your advocacy. Try to avoid where possible, uh, just that, 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 that thing where you're saying, all right, what are we doing today? What are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing the next day? But rather putting this into a plan, listing out who you're trying to target in that plan, what the timeline is, what your activities and strategies are, who the partners are, who is responsible for these activities. And again, this is just a way of ensuring that we don't get too caught in the every, everyday activities, but rather we're able to keep an eye across our campaign and ensure that we're on the right target. I've shared one particular uh, template for this year, but there's any number of templates. But this clearly shows here where you list your activities that you are doing, what tasks, are there to actually ensure those activities take place. Who in your organization or your partnership is responsible? So if I am managing one part, I know very quickly who should be doing the other part. What resources do we need for this? What's the timeline? And then what are our expected outcomes and indicators to ensure that this is happening? There's any number of different act action plans that you can use in templates. But my point is just ensure that there is one in place, that there's something that you and your team can look at and see, are we actually on track? Are we actually, are we actually ensuring that we're getting all of our activities done? But please remember that this thing does not have to keep the same. It should change as your advocacy campaign changes. Don't think of this as something that can be written once and never written again. Ideally, it's updated a lot. Maybe not so much your objectives, right? These should be, become pretty normal across your campaign. But the activities and who's important, that is likely to change all of the time. Because we get new information. We do activities that work or do not work. So it's important to then update those to ensure that we're getting the best possible chance of success. 
And then of course, an, a key element is actually the implementation, but ensuring that you're using as many of those elements as possible and remembering, as I said, to be flexible, proactive, change. Don't change the broader view, but change the way you're getting there by responding to what you're seeing is working or what is not working. There is nothing worse for advocates and for teams to go and do three, four, five, six activities that are the same when everyone has seen that the first one did not work. But everyone says, well, it's in our plan, so we must do it. No, it's not right. Adjust and change to ensure that you're responding to what you see as opportunities and what you're seeing is working or is not working. And a really important thing during your campaign as well, and this is particularly important in advocacy, is to ensure that you and the team are celebrating when you do see some steps towards success. Advocacy on big issues or policies is a really long process, right? It's really difficult. It's a long passage to get some fundamental change on any issue. So if we wait until we get the very, very final change for everyone to turn around and pat ourselves on the back or celebrate, we're going to be waiting a long time to know that we're doing the right thing, right? So make sure, particularly as young leaders, that when you are working in partnerships or with your organization, try and find opportunities along the path of advocacy to find times to celebrate the small wins, the small steps. Maybe it's the first time that you've met together as one coalition of partners. Okay, you have not achieved your advocacy target, but it's a small step to success. So ensure that you celebrate this. And if possible, share out to the world about this success. Because that might be something that brings others in to say, oh, I want to be a part of that. So really, really important to try and remember to, 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 to define and then celebrate those small steps to success. And of course, as part of all of this, ensuring that you're mon monitoring and evaluating progress. I think a lot of the times, particularly with developments uh, agency supported work, M&E becomes only what needs to be reported to the funder. But actually, good M&E is about informing you what is working or what is not working in your campaign and giving that opportunity to change and be flexible that I mentioned earlier. So there are any number of different frameworks, evaluation tools that are out there. What I would say is find the one that makes most sense to you, not necessarily the one that you feel is the most impressive or complicated. It should be the thing that works best for you and your team that makes sense and that has the best opportunity to help you change your campaign and your activities to get the most success. So, like I said, this outlining these different elements was not intended to make it feel complicated. Not that there's too much here. I am sure that most of you are doing most of these things. Rather, what the, the purpose of doing this is to say, when you go back after this event, look at your campaigns within your organizations. Think through, are we giving all of these attention? Are we ensuring that we're just taking a bit of a strategic approach across all of these to hopefully ensure that we take the best possible chance of reaching our advocacy goals? So as I said, it really is about saying, we're not gonna be able to put all of our resources and all of our time into every one of these steps but rather, do we ensure that we have some, someone looking after them, someone taking a bit of a strategic approach so that we are not wasting time and other resources running along one path without knowing that we've got our different framework involved to ensure that we're hopefully getting that best possible impact. So with that, I wanna say thank you very much. I hope it's been useful to, to see these different elements there Good luck in taking this forward. And uh, with that, I say thank you so much for your attention.